decision by all member states. And so those member states who have an issue with Armenia, and the minister knows very well who, needs to be reassured. This is not against Armenia, it's objective. They are Armenian citizens overstaying. Armenia is not the only country. There are also countries with whom we have visa liberalization who have problems, and these problems are addressed. And it's nitty-gritty work. It has to do with uh, sometimes police work, exchange of information, cooperation between uh, ministries of interiors of police. So it, it's, it's really not political at all. It's just practical. And I'm pretty sure that when the conditions are fulfilled, when there are no problems of this overstaying or asylum seekers uh, uh, present, uh, the, the, the decision will be positive. And we have past examples uh, like this. Um, now, your question on the agenda and the support of the government. Um, the devil is in the details, so I will be nuanced in my, in my question. We don't do programs to support government. We support country and population. So we don't use our assistance to reward or punish. What we look at is the concrete objective results. Now, if, ha if it happens that a government, and it is the case in Armenia with this new government, tackles issues which we had long identified as being a problem for Armenian people, Armenian business, investment climate, foreigners, which is basically rule of law and everything resolving, revolving around rule of law, from judicial reforms, from police reforms, um, way of appointing judges, accountability of justice, all these issues. If indeed you have a government that is tackling these problems, which have been before identified as by the EU as an objective source of mm, lack of development, hindrance for foreign investment, then of course we shall react and say, not because we are the new government is going to help you, but because you do the right thing. And we are doing this, and we are adapting our support to what we see. Uh, and uh, this is what we call potentiality. And Lawrence will say a word about, about the numbers, but this is very much what we have already done, and I think what we are ready to continue to do. Thank you, Luke. Now, I'd like to be very clear that um, following uh, the delivery of reform, we now see for the first time almost a doubling of the support of the European Union to Armenia. And uh, over half as much again has been awarded precisely because we see the delivery of reforms in what we call more for more. Uh, we, we've done an in-depth evaluation that shows uh, in the past uh, year substantial delivery on key reforms for the citizens of Armenia. For that very reason, uh, on the proposal uh, of the EU institutions and with the agreement of the EU member states, uh, we have substantially increased the subsistence to, um, uh, to Armenia. I already gave you one example of uh, to do what? I said to support uh, the implementation of this ambitious new agreement, the Comprehensive and Enhanced Partnership Agreement. Let me give you another example. We're putting in 28.5 million uh, euros to support precisely uh, activities on the ground in each of three regions, in Lori, in Shirak, in Tabush, that will boost the tourism industry, the creative industry, uh, and the food industries. And we are confident that that's going to make a real difference to the we food food industry. <laughs> Building on, and we've been testing it uh, uh, on an almost hourly basis since we arrived. It gets better and better, thank you.